the 15th of May 2021. As Casper Smeichel and Wes Morgan raised the FA Cup to the heavens, Leicester City yet again recorded a groundbreaking achievement. Their first FA Cup in their 139 year history. Five years on after winning their first ever Premier League in that historic 2016 Premier League winning season. Life at Leicester City seemed perfect. Rose from League One fought through the Championship, survived at the death and then next year won the league and they maintained a top six spot in years to come. In that time period, knocking out Sevilla in the Champions League round 16 and booking a quarter-final place in the Champions League just to be knocked out by Atletico Madrid. And twice just falling short of qualifying for the Champions League while being in the top four for the large majority of both years. There was so much hope around Leicester City of potentially breaking into that top six bubble and doing it naturally by fantastic recruitment, tactics and consistency. However, the state of play at Leicester City has turned sour dramatically. Yesterday, Leicester lost 1-0 at home to fellow relegation rivals Bournemouth, placing Leicester 19th place in the Premier League. And this isn't a surprise either, in that game against Bournemouth being second best for the large majority of the game. In their last eight games, they have lost seven and drawn only once. Also, with eight games left to go, they are currently managerless after sacking Brendan Rodgers about a week prior. And some may say, that is too late. So in today's video, we're going to go into what has happened at Leicester and the serious problems that have got on the horizon if they do go down. As Leicester is in a situation where they are set to see seven players depart as free agents and eight more enter the final year of contracts next season. First things first, tell me your thoughts on Leicester City and what do you think has happened. I'm going to try to cover every single aspect in this video and I'm sure I may miss something out so feel free and tell me your thoughts down below. If you do enjoy, smash a like button. Let's try to hit 2,500 likes and also subscribe if you're new. I believe we have hit 335,000 subscribers which is incredible and you guys have been dropping so much love on recent videos so thank you for that also massive shout out and love to the patrons of the channel these people help support the content here by just giving a helping hand and showing their appreciation for what we do here so they help me and support me so thank you for that and also we've hit almost 60 orders already on Mazzola designs and we have just launched a ton of new designs just today so go and check it out use code prem for 10% off it's my own design company and I work on it each day so thank you so far for the support and let's get into the video so with most football clubs and especially the common media, they love to talk about one thing and one thing only when it comes to a football club that's doing quite poorly and that is the manager. So let's talk about him. Brennan Rodgers, you may have forgot, has been at Leicester for quite a long time and has been incredibly successful after joining Leicester from Celtic in early 2019. Rodgers is a manager committed to his football philosophy and it worked very well at the start for Leicester. The patient build up from the back the progressive passing for the Lions and the high intensity pressing game worked in his first couple of years. His football fundamentals is based on three things, fitness, energy and pressing. When Leicester had a full strength team, they were a massive threat for many years in the Premier League, most notably in a 9-0 win against Southampton in October 2019, an astonishing result. And later the next season, beating Manchester City 5-2 away from home at the Etihad. However, one problem that Rodgers always had is that the squad always struggled with the intense workload and with the scheduled Premier League alongside European competitions or cup competitions always plagued the squad with fitness problems, which led to them falling out of the top four twice two years in a row after being in the top four for a large majority of the year. Due to their high intense style of play and a lack of quality depth in the team, they were never able to recover and lost out both times. The medical staff at Leicester had a lot of fingers being pointed at it and one decision took place that was always deemed controversial when Rodgers and Leicester released long-serving head physio Dave Rennie. And of course while you can't say that the medical team is the sole reason of why fitness issues happen or injuries happen however there is definitely 
Finn O'Leary correlation of an excellent fitness record previously, and then when Rennie left, it all seemed to dramatically disappear. Also, one interesting thing that people don't think about is the brand new training ground, and that when you look at it, it looks amazing, state of the art, and you think that is what you would want for a football club. However, several sources from within the club stating that Leicester has lost the close family like bond that was enjoyed in previous regimes. In a smaller complex, the staff and the players were much more together, and within tight corridors and a cozy environment, it felt like you were more together then and working towards something. A lack of separation between the players and the staff. This has been flagged from within the club in recent months that the club may be losing a part of its culture. Even going so far to install square tables so that the players can sit opposite from each other with a better attention to interact. They also banned mobile phones while they ate. Despite the shiny new surroundings, it still seems to be forming a disconnect. So due to Roger's style of play, he's always struggled to field a consistent lineup. That has always been a problem and the game plan and the consistency has suffered due to that. An image from the Athletic showcases the dramatic decrease in uh, attacking and defensive weaknesses. As you can see here in blue, his expected goals was through the roof and massively outweighing the expected goals against. And for pretty much two years, he had expected goals against them in almost every single game. The inconsistency leads to players' morale and confidence getting lower and therefore losing more faith in the manager and the game plan that he sets out. And when you have a game plan that is so focused on being high press, high energy, when you don't have the confidence or even the trust to focus out on that game plan and to pursue it, everything falls apart. Reports from the club showcased that the players were very upset with the way they were playing and reached out to Rodgers demanding that they change the play style to adapt from the patient build up play with high press to instead becoming much more direct to get the ball forward to the likes of Vardy and Dakar, who are much more efficient at receiving the ball over the shoulder and into space than passing short. The attack force for Leicester has been diabolical this year as they are bottom in terms of every other Premier League club for shots per game. And there's been a lack of investment at a club in recent years, unfortunately. So in terms of on the pitch and with the manager, that is pretty much what's happened and why they are so poor this year. The play style alongside the injury record, alongside just lack of confidence in the game plan and the manager leads to a perfect storm of negativity and a death spiral that the players simply didn't trust what they were being told to do. And when you are in that situation, it is incredibly tough to get out of it. Reported just the other day that Jesse March from Leeds United, who was sacked, is currently the front runner to be the new manager of Leicester City. Tell me down below your thoughts on if you think this is a good idea. However, let's get into the next part, which is the finances. The COVID-19 pandemic played a huge role in Leicester's decline, and it started to impact the club way before they even beat Chelsea in that FA Cup final. Leicester was ambitious. From winning the Premier League back in 2016, he wanted to maintain that and to push forward and that is what they did and with that you need money and they sustained a challenge for European convocation, they pushed for trophies and caused problems for the established Premier League top six who all had much greater financial resources. Their recruitment policy was simple, they invested in a squad of young hungry players that are ready to prove themselves and to make sure that they can keep on to these players they offer them longer and more expensive contracts and including fees spending 40 million on Yuri Tielemans 30 million on Ayose Perez and 35 million on Wesley Fofana. And due to their ambitions as well to become an established top level Premier League football club, they also spent 100 million on a brand new lavish training complex at Seagrave. And also plans were drawn up to a massive stadium expansion project. Leicester was committed financially with several loans taken out from their parent company King Power and Australian bank Macquire in support of their ambitions. And each year, each month that went by, they were making a loss and debts were rising and this all happened before covid hit when the premier league stopped on march 13th 2020 it will not return for three months and it dramatically impacted the money that leicester was bringing in for example when it comes to match their revenue this accounted for around 10 percent of the club's revenue. Including this, also due to the Premier League broadcasters and they were no matches to show, they lost money from broadcasting and they lost even the prize money that they would usually get when they won the 2021 FA Cup. In total, the club predicted that the pandemic cost them around 50 million, but the damage was much more extensive than what you could imagine. King Power, their parent company, of course, from their ownership, was severely impacted by the pandemic due to lack of tourism, obviously. And according to leading business journal Forbes, the chairman, Iowat, I'm not going to say his last name, but 
that, I'm so sorry, I can't say it, Iowa's personal wealth had fallen by around two thirds, from 5.9 billion to 1.7 billion, which is a dramatic decrease. However, despite that loss, the ownership did convert 164 million into equity to try to ease Leicester's financial burden from the COVID-19 pandemic. Of course, Leicester was not the only club that was damaged by the pandemic. However, the timing of what Leicester was doing really was the worst possible timing that you could ever imagine, as the fallout from the pandemic is still being felt. As last season, Leicester announced they had a record loss of 92.5 million pounds for the 21 22 season. Of course, maintaining a challenge to be a top half football club in the Premier League is expensive. And one problem is Leicester's wages to revenue ratio, which is pretty disastrous at this current moment, as revenue has grown to 250 million. However, they have spent 182 million on wages alone last year, which is a worrying ratio to have. And this is when we get to the contracts, because the contracts is a massive factor of concern right now. Of their senior squad, this includes seven players that will leave this summer or could leave the summer as free agents. This includes the following Sayunshu, Ryan Bertrand, IOC Perez, Yori Tielemans, Mendy, Daniel Marte, and Johnny Evans, and eight more will be entering their final year contract next year in Jimmy Vardy. James Madison, Wilfred Ndidi, Kalichi Inacho, Luke Thomas, Priate, Vestergaard, and Alex Smithies. Of course, the big names in Tillemans and Madison have had talks about re-signing, but they're not expected to do so as the future of the club is not certain, and the way they are going, it looks quite unlikely that they will be signing on. Some are coming to an end of their time at the club, like the likes of Jamie Vardy or Johnny Evans, and others are potentially really just a waste of wages that they just need to get off the books. However, there's been no takers. This all adds up to a major rebuild needed at Leicester in the next 18 months. And Leicester are in a position where a group of players they spent over 110 million to acquire may leave for free at the end of the season. And when you have players that may not know their future, that does play a factor on the pitch because so many of their main players in their squad are not committed to the club and are still thinking about their future at the end of this year or for next season. The fact of the matter is the end of the Rodgers era has been on the cards for some time and for many Leicester fans, they believe that it has been made too late, the decision to sack him. As it has been quite obvious for a long time for many fans that even though he was great in the past, his ideas was just not coming across to the players anymore. Fingers has been pointed at the ownership for being weak in their decision making and holding on for it for too long. Will they stick with it into a manager now or bring in someone like Jesse Marsh, who could be there for the future or could go down in the championship? On paper, the lesser team is very talented and for no reason should they be second bottom at the Premier League. They simply should be doing much better and the players has to take ownership for that too. You cannot all blame it on the manager. The goalkeeper has been a massive problem as Ward has been simply poor for a large chunk of the year. Having two almost backup goalkeepers as your main goalkeepers has been really strange to watch. The centre backs has been poor for pretty much the entire year and the attacking force just hasn't had the ball enough to actually make anything creative happen. Tell me down below your thoughts on Leicester City. Of course, if you are a Leicester fan and tell me how do you feel right now? Of course, after that loss to Bournemouth for home, it's not over by any means, but I, I can see a lot of Leicester fans already make decisions that they think it already is. So tell me your thoughts down below. Your team is more than good enough and maybe with some new ideas, a new manager, maybe that should give you enough to get over the line as I still think that they will not go down this year because they have got quality there. However, they need to get a new manager in fast because they've got some big, big games coming up. So tell me your thoughts down below. Make sure to subscribe if you are new and also smash a like too. Let's try to hit 2,500 likes and thank you for your time, boys. See you later.